I work in the mobile programming system lab, and Tom Flynn over there is my colleague. The two of us are in the team that develops virtual reality software for mobile platforms. So we don't do the headsets that are Windows. We do things that are based for the Gear VR and mobile. Our team is small, so we're primarily researchers, and we provide open source software for mobile platforms. Open source means completely free, Apache 2.0 license, and our claim to fame is that we are native to mobile. That means we understand all of the Android stuff. We work with the Android tools, we work with all of the Android APIs natively, and you can use our system for Java. So if you're working on something for the Gear VR and you have some special hardware, or maybe you have some Android APIs you want to use, we might be a better choice than Unity because we play really well with the Android ecosystem. We, our system works on both Daydream and Oculus mobile platforms. So there's a lot of devices that are in both of those categories. Not just the ones from Google and Samsung, there's Oculus Go, there's many different types of Daydream devices beside the Pixel phone. So if you're looking to do a mobile VR experience, and then you have engineers that are already familiar with Android, our, the Gear VR framework might be a better choice than Unity or Unreal. Okay, well, I'm, I'm just going to go through the whole thing. So, our, our system has got two parts. One part is the Java-facing part that interacts with Android, and most of that is implemented in Java. There's the part underneath deals with graphics that talks to the GPU and that rendering part is written in C++ and it's highly optimized. So we will give you better performance on a mobile device than WebGL we, we have optimized. We may give you better performance than you video on real depending on what your application is doing. So this is the architecture of the Gear VR framework application. This is where learning a little bit about more game development comes in. You have an application object that plugs right into Android's application. So you have access not only to the Gear VR framework infrastructure to manage VR and cameras, but you also have access to all the Android stuff right now. Like Unity, our system is component-based. You make a C out of things called scene objects, and these are what is displayed in your game, sort of like the bullets and the guns and the, the people running, all those things. And then you attach components to these scene objects to give them particular behaviors. For example, here we have a transform component that will place the scene object in space and orient it. And then attached to that, we have a renderer component with a mesh that is the shape. So, for example, if I was an avatar, just the shape of my body is the mesh. But when you put clothes on me, then I have material. And that is how my colors are, what parts are what colors, how my color also reacts to light, is it shiny? And, and so that's how your objects are described internally in most any 
So what are seen objects? Well, we have geometric shapes, like cones and cubes. And my, one of my favorites is the sphere. You know, if you're inside a sphere and you play a 360 video, all of a sudden you're in another world. So the sphere is pretty useful. Then we also have very custom objects that interact with Android ecosystems. The web view objects and objects are pretty much a web page in your VR app that interact with it. The camera object allows you to input from a camera and work with augmented reality toolkits like AR4 or Victoria. And we actually have examples of how to do this. In, in our samples repository. And finally, we have a video object, and that video object can stream from a variety of different types of videos, and you can choose which video player you want to use. So if you have a custom one, you can use that instead of the, the Android apps of like a standard one. So I'm going to show you a little bit of code now. I'm going to show you what is the code in Java to make that application. So that application is a flat plane with the Gear VR logo on it. But it's in VR. So if you put it, those, the, the code you're going to see, if you do that and you put it in the headset, you get it in VR. The takeaway for non-developers is is only a few lines of code. There's not a lot to making an object and putting some appearance. And, and this shows you how you might do that in Java. The key thing here to notice is we have an asset loader that can load textures and put them on shapes. So what is this asset loader thing all about? process. 
So we have no idea really how many applications are in the store unless they ask us for help or we showcase them in some way or they contact us. So last year at SDC we actually showcased a few applications that were written using your VR framework. So I could talk a little bit about those, but there definitely are others. Alpha Cruise used your VR framework to write a video streaming application that could go from the very low end cameras to the very highest cameras and stream live video in VR. They demonstrated that in this And we have Cydia, which is a game studio in Brazil that, that is owned by Samsung. And they have a number of applications in the store. One of them I know is Look to the Sky. Is the other one in the story? What's the name of it? What? Kepler Defense? Kepler Defense. So they have some games in the store. Kepler Defense, Look to the Sky. They also do a lot of work on the Gear VR framework itself. For example, Cydia implemented all of our business. They put bullet in and we got working and we implemented the blender exporters. So they're, they're not just a game studio, they also work on energy. And then finally there's Time Code Labs that they Sync VR. Now this would be interesting to some interesting to some of you because Sync VR allows you to take a VR experience video and synchronize it across a set of Thank you. 